Hello and welcome back. We are talking about uh, chemical reaction equilibria in the previous two video lectures. Uh, we looked at uh, what is known as the reaction coordinate uh, which will actually quantify all the mole fractions uh, in a chemical reaction and then we also looked at uh, how we can calculate the equilibrium constant for a reaction. It turns out that the equilibrium constant is related to the Gibbs free energy change. Uh, in addition, if we do not have the Gibbs free energy change for the reaction at the desired temperature, then we can use the heats of reaction data along with the specific heat capacities for each of the species to correct this equilibrium constant to um, uh, the desired temperature. What we will do today is work on a few problems on how to calculate this equilibrium constant, the numerical value for this equilibrium constant and then apply the concept of equilibrium constant to calculate the mole fractions at equilibrium both for a gas phase reaction as well as for a liquid phase reaction. So let us get started then. The first problem for today uh, is for synthesis of ammonia. This reaction uh, is occurring at 723 Kelvin and we are interested in finding the equilibrium constant for this reaction at 723 Kelvin. Uh, we have some information given to us. Um, first is the heat of formation data for ammonia, then the Gibbs free energy of formation and also the specific heat capacities for each of the three species in the ideal gas state or rather the temperature dependency of the specific heat capacities for these three species uh, in the ideal gas state. So we are going to use this data and calculate the equilibrium constant for the reaction. Now if you recall the equilibrium constant uh, K is defined as uh, the change in Gibbs free energy over RT or negative of that and then that would be ln K. But then since we require the equilibrium constant at 723 Kelvin, we need the Gibbs free energy change at 728 to 723 Kelvin. Now if you look at the data given to us, we are given the Gibbs free energy change not at 723 Kelvin but rather at 298 Kelvin and also it is not the Gibbs free energy change but only the Gibbs free energy of formation for ammonia. Now if you recall the way we have defined the formation reaction is uh, it is the it is a reaction in which one mole of the desired species is formed from its constituent uh, elements, right? And in this case, in fact, the reaction we're looking at is the formation reaction for ammonia. We're making one mole of ammonia in this reaction, right? We're making one mole of ammonia in this reaction, and it is formed from its constituent elements two moles of nitrogen uh, or half a mole of nitrogen and 1.5 moles of hydrogen. So in fact, this is the formation reaction for ammonia and hence this number given to us uh, negative 16,450 is actually the Gibbs free energy for this reaction as well or Gibbs free energy change for this reaction as well. Alternately, if you think about it, the Gibbs free energy for formation of the two species, nitrogen and hydrogen is 0 and hence if you take the Gibbs or if we calculate the Gibbs free energy of formation for this particular reaction, it is still going to be negative 16450. Uh, same thing for the enthalpy of formation. So in that sense, these two numbers given here are not just heats of formation and Gibbs free energy of formation, they also turn out to be heat of the desired reaction and the Gibbs free energy change of the desired reaction for this particular uh, scenario. Now once we sorted that out, let us see what else we need. Uh, so we have the Gibbs free energy at 298 Kelvin but what I need is the equilibrium constant at 723 Kelvin. In this scenario, this is at 298 Kelvin. So the temperature T naught we are looking at in all these equations is 298 Kelvin that is given to us and the actual temperature of the reaction is 723 Kelvin. So we have to correct K from 298 to 723 Kelvin. The way we do that is using these two factors K1 and K2. 
K1 turns out to be the correction factor assuming that the enthalpy of the reaction is constant. Uh, this turns out to be the enthalpy at 298 Kelvin and this is the value of course at 298 Kelvin. And then the second correction is to correct for change in enthalpy itself with temperature and the way we do it is using the specific heat capacities delta A, delta B, delta C and delta D, right. Now, so let's calculate uh, each one of these terms. For the first term K naught turns out to be exponential of negative delta G naught which is negative of negative 16450 over R which is 8.314 times T naught which is 298 and if I calculate uh, this number it turns out to be 764.8. This is the value of K naught. This is the equilibrium constant if the reaction were to occur at 298 Kelvin. Top of this we correct it for K1. The value would be exponential of delta H naught in this case delta of H naught uh, is uh, negative 46,110 over 8.314 times 298 that's T naught to 1 minus 298 over 723. And if we simplify this number turns out to be 1.77 into 10 power minus 5. Now if I just leave it at this and I calculate the product of the two terms K naught times K1 then it would come out to be it would come out to be 0 0.0136. This is the value of K naught times K1 at 723 Kelvin but then this is assuming uh, this will be the equilibrium constant if we assume that this uh, delta H is constant with temperature, which it is not. Uh, we are given the specific heat capacity, so what we do is employ another factor K2 to correct for change in delta H with temperature. And the way we do that is using the expression given here. And if you recall this delta A, right, let me use another ink here. Um, delta A is sigma nu i A for i, right? And what we are given is a specific heat capacity is A, B, C or the terms for parameters for specific heat capacities A, B, C and D for each of the species. In that sense, delta A is going to be nu for ammonia times A for ammonia plus nu for nitrogen times A for nitrogen plus nu for hydrogen times A for hydrogen. And for ammonia nu is 1, it is a product so it is positive and it is 1 in this case. So it will be A for ammonia. For nitrogen, half a mole of nitrogen is reacting, it is a reactant so it is negative and the stoichiometric coefficient is half, negative half times A for ammonia, uh, nitrogen and for hydrogen the stoichiometric coefficient is negative 3 over 2 times A for hydrogen. And if I simplify all these numbers, it turns out that the value, what we get is the value of A and in this case that number turns out to be two, negative 2.9355. And similarly, I can calculate the other values. Uh, this is negative 2.9355. I can calculate the value of B. Uh, going by a similar logic, it would be 0 0.002091. Uh, in this case, C is 0 for all the species in any way. And finally, the value for D we get going by a similar logic is negative 33050. Negative 33050. So once I calculated delta A, delta B, delta C, and delta D, I can calculate K2 now, right? K2 is going to be all of these. Uh, we also need to calculate tau, right? So let's write tau down first. Uh, let's write tau first. 
tau is T over T naught, and in this case it is 723 over 298, and turns out to be 2.426. Once I have all of these numbers, I can go back and calculate K2, plug in all the numbers, and it turns out K2 we get is going to be 0 0.5069. Once we have this, K is going to be in this case, this product turns out to be 6.875 times 10 to the power negative, negative 3. So this is the equilibrium constant at 723 Kelvin. Now, notice that delta H, or notice that at 298 Kelvin, the equilibrium constant is 700, right? Where was that? Yeah. At 298 Kelvin, the equilibrium constant is 764.8. But if I increase the temperature, the equilibrium constant has gone down and came to 6.875 10 to the power negative 3. It has gone down considerably almost an order of uh, six orders of magnitude, right? That is because the enthalpy of the reaction is negative. If the enthalpy of the reaction is negative, it means that the reaction is exothermic, uh, heat would be liberated, and at higher temperatures, the forward reaction is not favored because of the exothermicity, and hence the equilibrium constant, constant goes down. Now, you can also obtain the same going through these calculations mathematically, find K0 and then K1, and then if you multiply the product of K0 and K1, it would be lower than K0 itself, or in that sense, K0, K1 is going to be less than 1 because delta H is, is uh, negative, which means that the equilibrium in case of an exothermic reaction is going to shift towards the left. When we increase the temperature, the equilibrium will shift towards the right in case of an endothermic reaction if I increase the temperature. So what we said then is delta H not less than zero, then it is an exothermic and uh, delta H not greater than zero, then it is endothermic. The equilibrium shifts to right as temperature is decreased. It shifts to left as temperature is increased in case of an exothermic reaction. And in this case, the equilibrium shifts to left as temperature is increased is decreased the equilibrium shifts to right as temperature is increased this is the case for an endothermic reaction and if you think about it this is what we call as le chatelier's principle which we usually come across in uh, physical chemistry this is where it comes from right so let's move on to the second problem. In this case, we have the same reaction. This time, uh, we're given the equilibrium constant at the desired temperature, 723 Kelvin. If it is not given, we know how to find it as in case of the earlier example. Once we know the equilibrium constant, the ne next thing we want to do is find the equilibrium mole fraction for each of the species, right? And we are given the initial uh, number of moles we begin the reaction with, and we want to find the equilibrium mole fraction or the mole fraction at equilibrium for each of the species. Now to solve this problem what we'll do is we'll use the um, given information. If you recall uh, what we said is that the product of the terms yi times phi i hat to the power nu i was p over p naught to the power negative nu times the equilibrium constant K. And for the special case of an ideal gas, uh, we can neglect the fugacity coefficients as well. And once we do that, uh, what we get is simply 
the product of yi to the power nu i is p by p naught times negative nu multiplied with k or sorry p over p naught to the power negative nu multiplied with k. Now what we'll do is uh, we'll uh, try to write the given information first. Um, let's write the three species here. Ammonia, H2 and NH3. Uh, for each of these species nu i is negative half, negative 3 by 2 and 1. Uh, the initial number of moles is 1 half for this, 3 by 2 for this and 0 for this, right? That's how we are starting the reaction. And the final number of moles, what we'll do is we'll write it in terms of the reaction coordinate. This would be half minus half times the reaction coordinate. This would be 3 by 2 minus 3 by 2 times the reaction coordinate and this will be the reaction coordinate itself. Now at equilibrium, uh, let us say that is uh, when we say reaction coordinate, this is a reaction coordinate at equilibrium. Now we'll let us call it as epsilon E. It is not at any condition, it is rather at the equilibrium condition. So I'm going to use the subscript E for this reaction coordinate. Now at this react equilibrium condition, if I add the total number of moles, it will be 2 minus, this will be 2 times epsilon plus epsilon that would add up to 2 minus epsilon. That's the total number of moles. So if I, I were to write the equilibrium mole fractions in terms of the reaction coordinate, then y, uh, let me label these species for sake of uh, ease. I'm going to call this as species 1, this as species 2 and ammonia as species 3. So y1 is going to be half minus half times epsilon at equilibrium by 2 minus epsilon y2 is going to be 3 by 2 minus 3 by 2 times epsilon over 2 minus epsilon. And y3 is going to be, y3 is going to be uh, epsilon over 2 minus epsilon, right? Once we have these, I can put these, uh, I can rewrite the equation 1 this time in terms of the reaction coordinates rather than mole fractions. And when I do that, what happens is, so it reads y3 by y1 to the power half, y2 to the power, to the power 3 over 2 is equal to p over p naught times negative nu times k. That was the equation. I can rewrite all the y's in terms of the equilibrium reaction coordinate. That will become epsilon by 2 minus epsilon. That's the y3. Then y1 is half minus half epsilon by 2 minus epsilon to the power half. And this will be 3 by 2 minus 3 by 2 times epsilon by 2 minus epsilon to the power 3 over 2. This will equal P, which is 100. Well, we're not given P for this particular problem. So let us say we want to find uh, the let us say the reaction is occurring at 100 bar. So let's pick a pressure for this reaction. Um, it should have been given. Uh, so let's say this is the given information along with everything else in the problem. So the pressure for this particular reaction is 100 bar, right? In that case, P over P naught is going to be 100 over P naught, which is the standard state pressure. And we said that for gases, the standard state pressure is usually uh, 1 bar. Uh, that is what is chosen and based on this standard state pressure we obtain the Gibbs free energy of formation from which we obtain K data as in case of the previous problem. So P naught is 1 bar in this case to the power negative nu is negative 1, negative of negative nu. So negative 1 is nu, negative nu is then negative of negative 1 which is going to be 1 times K and K in this case 
is given to us it is 6.875 into 10 power minus 3 times 6.875 into 10 power negative negative 3. So this is the equation we are looking at. I should have used a subscript E throughout for all the reaction coordinates. Now if you look at this equation, everything in this equation is uh, pretty much uh, fixed except uh, reaction coordinate. And once you solve this equation, what we get is the equilibrium reaction coordinate. And it turns out at 100 bar, this value turns out to be 0 0.2732. All right. And once we have the equilibrium reaction coordinate, uh, I can go back and calculate the mole fractions. Uh, in this scenario, the mole fraction y1, if you recall, we said is related to the reaction coordinate uh, via this equation, half minus half uh, epsilon over 2 minus epsilon. And that value for 100 bar turns out to be 0 0.2104. Similarly, y2 is going to be 0.6313 and y3 is going to be 0.1582, right? Now let's see what happens if I operate the reactor at a different pressure since we solved this particular problem for 100 bar. Let's quickly run through another calculation. Let's say the reactor instead of being operated at 100 bar is operated at much higher pressure, 200 bar. If we do that, uh, nothing changes until this point except in this particular equation, instead of 100 bar for the pressure, I need to replace it with 200 bar, right? And once I do that, everything else stays the same. That's the only place where pressure appears in this equation. And now I need to solve a new equation for epsilon. And if I solve this particular equation, it turns out that the epsilon equilibrium reaction coordinate I get in this particular scenario is going to be 0 0.4009, it goes up. And uh, the values of uh, y1 is going to be slightly lower because epsilon has gone up. y2 is also going to be a little lower, 5, 6, 2. And y3, because it's the product, it will increase slightly to 0.2507. So as you can see, once the pressure has increased, the equilibrium reaction coordinate has increased and the reaction has moved forward uh, uh, and it has shifted to the right in this particular scenario. Remember we discussed about Le Chatelier principle in case of temperature effect. In this case, uh, this is the effect of pressure on the reaction. This particular scenario, as it turns out, right, nu, the overall stoichiometric number, which is sigma nu i, is less than zero, right? The total number of moles in the reaction go down as the reaction moves towards the right. And once that happens, uh, to increase the forward reaction or to shift the reaction towards right, we need to increase the pressure when nu is less than zero. Similarly, when nu is greater than zero, I need to decrease the pressure to shift the reaction to towards right. And this again is uh, what we call as Le Chatelier principle, but this is where it comes from. Mathematically, uh, this is the effect of pressure on the uh, reaction. Does the reaction shift forward or backward as I change the pressure? That depends on the overall stoichiometric number nu, whether it is negative or positive. In fact, if it is zero, then um, uh, pressure will not have any effect on the equilibrium reaction coordinate. So that completes this particular problem. Uh, let's see, let's move on to one other problem. Okay, in this case, we have a liquid phase reaction. Uh, the reaction is for synthesis of butyl acetate. Uh, from acetic acid and butanol, we form butyl acetate and water. All of this is a liquid phase reaction occurring at 356 Kelvin, and we're given the equilibrium constant for this particular reaction, it's 12.8. Initially, we feed one mole of each of the reactants to the reactor 
what we want to find is the equilibrium mole fraction for each of the species. Again, it is similar to the previous problem, but in this case instead of a gas phase reaction, this is a, this is a liquid phase reaction. Let us see how we can solve this particular problem. Before we do that, let us quickly talk a little bit about the liquid phase reactions. And the way we have done this for a gas phase reaction is starting from the equation that reads the product of the terms F i hat over F i naught raised to the power nu i equals k, the equilibrium constant for the reaction and then we malpronated F i hats and F i naughts uh, to get uh, things in terms of the mole fractions and hence the reaction coordinates. What we will do now is do a similar exercise. Let us first look at the ratio F i hat over, over F i naught. For a e liquid phase mixture, F i hat or the fugacity of species i in the liquid is X i gamma i F i where F i is the pure component uh, fugacity. So this ratio then F i hat to F i naught is simply going to be x i gamma i f i over f i naught. So using the activity coefficients, we have eliminated the need for fugacity of species in the mixture. Now I have the ratio of the pure component fugacity at the condition of interest to the fuel component fugacity at the standard state. And the way we will handle it is writing uh, g i minus g i naught to be r t ln f i over f i naught right and uh, since uh, g i minus g i naught is integral of p naught to p v i d p at constant temperature. G, remember that g is v d p so g i minus g i naught is that integral and if v i is fairly constant over small pressure changes which might be true because this is a liquid mixture. So, we can neglect the change in the molar volume of the liquid mixture over small pressure changes and if that happens V i can come out of the integral and G i minus G i naught is going to be V i p minus uh, p naught. Now, I can take this put it back there so that V i p minus p naught then will be R t ln f i by f i naught, right. Uh, so, allow me to use this space. What we will do then is write the ratio f i by f i naught as v i p minus p naught over, over r t, in fact exponential of this term. This will be the ratio f i to f i naught from this particular expression. So, I will go back put it there. What happens then is f i hat over f i naught is going to be x i gamma i exponential of v i p minus p naught over r t. Now, if you recall, this is something similar, something similar to the pointing correction factor we talked about. Right. This exponential term is similar to the pointing correction factor we talked about earlier in case of fugacity of a pure liquid. Uh, for fairly small pressure changes again if p minus p and p naught are pretty close to one another, I can even neglect this term the pointing correction factors are going to be very small usually for conditions of interest. Um, this term is going to be very close to 1, I can neglect that and if that happens the ratio of f i hat to f i naught will be simply x i, x i times gamma i. I can put this back in the equation above and what happens then is pi or the product of the terms f i hat to f i naught will now be x i gamma i to the power nu i equals equals k. Now for liquid mixtures which are ideal in nature, the activity coefficient also will be equal to 1 and that equation then reduces to the product of the terms x i term to the power nu i will be simply equal to k, right. And this is what we call as law of mass action in physical chemistry, right. 
If it is not 1, then we also have to include the activity coefficient and use the formulation here which reads the product of the terms x i gamma i to the power nu i will be equal to k. But if the liquid mixture is ideal, then I can simply use the law of uh, mass action uh, to handle the particular scenario. Now, let us go back and look at a problem uh, to apply this particular uh, equation. We have a reaction which is used to synthesize butyl acetate. It is an esterification reaction. Uh, the reaction is between acetic acid and butanol to give butyl acetate and water. This is completely a liquid phase reaction occurring at 356 Kelvin. We are given the equilibrium constant K for the reaction is 12.8 at this temperature. Initially, we are feeding one mole of each of the two reactants into the reactor and we want to find the equilibrium mole fractions for each of the two species. Let us see how we can solve this particular problem. Let us, uh, as we have done in the previous example, let us give uh, some numbers for each of the species 1, 2, 3 and 4, right. The initial number of moles N1 naught is 1, N2 naught is 1, N3 naught is 0 and 4 naught is also equal to 0. If the reaction proceeds, then the final number of moles is going to be 1 minus epsilon. At equilibrium, it will be epsilon E. This will be 1 minus epsilon E. This will be epsilon. This will also be epsilon. Now, if I add, this will be 2 and this will be uh, 2 epsilons cancel. This will still be, this will still be 2. The mole fractions y1 is going to be 1 minus epsilon by 2, y2 will also be 1 minus epsilon by 2, y3 will be epsilon by 2, y4 will also be equal to epsilon by 2, right. And well, I should have used the term x for mole fraction instead of y because we are talking about a liquid phase reaction. So, let us call them as x1, x2, x3 and x4. Now, for the liquid phase reaction, if I assume the solution to be ideal, then this is simply x3, x4, both 3 and 4, the products have new i's of plus 1 and plus 1. The reactants have new i's of negative 1, so they appear in the denominator. It will be x1 times x1 times x2. So, this will be epsilon over 2, epsilon over 2 or epsilon e rather over 2, 1 minus epsilon e by 2, 1 minus epsilon e by 2. So, this will be epsilon e square over 1 minus epsilon e square. This is the value for k, right. Uh, we are already given the value of k. k is 12.8, so that implies at equilibrium epsilon e minus square by 1 minus epsilon e squared will be equal to 12.8. And if I solve this particular equation, I get the reaction coordinate at equilibrium in this scenario, it turns out to be 0 0.787816. Once I have the reaction coordinate, finding the mole fractions is pretty straightforward. In this scenario, it turns out that x1 is 0.109 x2 also is same 0.109, x3 is 0.391 and so is x4. So, what we have done in this particular problem is we have used the liquid phase reaction, we have used uh, the, we have related the equilibrium constant in the liquid phase reaction to the equilibrium mole fractions. Of course, assuming uh, that the activity coefficient in the liquid mixture are 1, but it does not have to be. If we know the activity coefficient, the, the, they can also be incorporated into these expressions and we can still uh, solve the problem to obtain uh, the conversion or the equilibrium reaction coordinate. And from that, we can go back and calculate uh, what each of the mole fractions at equilibrium are going to be. So, this is how we handle a liquid phase reaction. So, with that, uh, we conclude the video lecture today on chemical reaction equilibria. 
that brings us to the end of this particular course on chemical engineering thermodynamics.